Good afternoon all. Today a bit of retro electronics. It's an AVO meter lent to me by my friend Paul. Now this is not an AVO 8. This is actually a universal AVO meter model 7 and you can tell that from these rather fancy decals on the knobs here, the A, the V and the O in this highly stylized form. So let's get this thing out of its case. Now this is going to be quite tricky because of these blocks which seem determined to hold it in but uh, there it is now I'm quite interested to try and work out the age of this thing um, it's model 7 which was produced between well Wikipedia says 1936 and 1986 I think it is um, the calibration date is 1982 but that doesn't tell me when this was actually built so on the back it says it's a universal AVO meter model 7, uh, AVO Limited Dover, England, a member of the Thorn Group. So I, I suppose we could find out when AVO became a member of the Thorn Group. That might help to date it. But uh, this is a full set of instructions on the back. And uh, in the rather old and frankly a bit smelly case, it says supplied and serviced by Ilesco Fraser Limited. Uh, we've got a postcode there, there's a telephone number of the 041 type, there's a telex number as well which dates it, well telex was still in use in the 80s I suppose wasn't it? And uh, the leads themselves are quite interesting, these are what look like 4mm uh, banana style connectors, but then the probes are just, looks like bits of brass with a insulating sleeve on it and that just pushes into there so they look quite old um, I'm not sure whether that dates it and then there are the option of these crocodile clips and they say on them well strangely they're both different one's got uh, a different logo to the other but they're both hold tight uh, Sussex UK collet terminals now via Wikipedia I found this uh, instruction manual for the AVO Model 7 Mark II, but this looks slightly different. On the top, uh, which I presume is the battery uh, area, same as the one I've got, there's this sort of ray section with a twist uh, metal piece here. Mine's not like that. Uh, this one just has this flat plate with keyways in it, um, which if I can get it off, it's a bit tricky, reveals the battery compartment and that takes a D-type cell in this really quite <laughs> bodged up holder and two 4.5 volt uh, batteries. Now there are no batteries in the meter and I don't have a battery like this, this is quite an old uh, design battery but it's three cells in series and then terminating in these two strips. Uh, I think the shorter one is positive, the longer one is negative but it took two of these to produce 9 volts. I think that was for the higher resistance uh, ranges. But the holder for the D-type cell is really quite nasty. It's just this square of, hmm, now what would this be? Phenolic or Bakelite or possibly even SRBP, the resin bonded paper that PCBs are made of. Two uh, probably brass springy bits and then just uh, attached to wires now this is really difficult, it goes in diagonally to centre the battery within this holder, it's quite tricky to get this back in, but it goes in like that and then you've got to attach these two terminals to these two uh, threaded rods and nuts. It's all a bit Heath Robinson really, but I suppose it's of its age. Now I want to open this up, uh, partly to find out what's rattling inside here. There's something rattling around. Um, so I'm going to undo these screws. There are more screws on the top and bottom. Now interestingly this one's got some black gunk in it and I suspect that was put in it by whoever calibrated it. Um, tech Instruments is that? TE something instruments. Um, possibly as a sort of a warranty void or calibration void if you remove it. But let's get all those screws out. So that's five of the six done. I'm not sure what this stuff is. But it's definitely there, I think, to uh, act as a deterrent. Oh, wait a minute. There doesn't appear to be a screw in there. 
Oh no, there isn't. Oh, I'm not sure what that is then. Well, I've been battling with this trying to get it open and I've got a feeling there's a screw there under the uh, calibration sticker which has caught me out. So that's uh, a clever move by the calibration people. That actually is the uh, calibration void if removed. Okay, let's see what we've got inside. Ah, interesting. Uh, just fingers here to take the battery voltage down into the meter. Where would they touch on? Hmm. Uh, well, possibly these three points here. Okay. So what can we see here? Well, things that stand out immediately are the transformer. So that must be to do with uh, AC measurements. And then up here, there's a board with four diodes on it, um, probably in a bridge configuration. So I imagine that's also linked with the AC measurements. Now on the front dial, if you want to do DC measurements, you have to set the AC switch to DC. And it's quite interesting what that does uh, underneath. Because in the DC position, all this big tower of uh, switch elements here pushes up. You can see that move up in the DC position. In all other positions, it stays down. So DC rewires the whole meter uh, with this bank of switches here. Very interesting arrangement. Now, a similar thing happens with the uh, DC switch. In the amps position, you can just see that those fingers there close up and they stay closed for all the amp ranges. And then they open again when you come out of the amp ranges. The main switching is done with the fingers down inside there. You can see the fingers and the rotating uh, switch that touches onto those fingers moving all the way around. Quite a lot of mechanical switch gear. Now this thing here is the um, overload release thing. It's very, very light lightly sprung and that pushes out the uh, overload switch, this one on the front here. Now these two blue resistors uh, here, this one is 100k and this one is 149.2k. If I tilt this round uh, they have what looks like a date code on them 78 so that probably dates this to around that time. Now at the front you've got these P, uh, R and Q adjusters and they are, well you only need to listen to them to hear that they are wire wound and if I turn it round you can see that this one has this uh, quite nice wire wound <laughs> resistor with this sort of following braid that uh, acts as a centre wiper I suppose. This one just looks a bit more homemade. This is the Q one. You have to actually pull this one out to make it activate. And when you pull it out, it disconnects that switch on the back, which is interesting. So it obviously goes from calibrated mode to uncalibrated mode. And then you can wind it around the rather manky looking uh, wire wound out a bit. Now the coil mechanism, the moving coil bits uh, itself I don't really touch but if I rock it you can see that moving and there's the pointer needle there which you can also see moving when I rock the meter. And down here there are some sort of hand wound resistances including this really thick uh, sort of brass bus bar thing which I'm guessing must be the 10 amp uh, resistor because this has a maximum current rating of 10 amps. Well, I found what was rattling around inside. It's a little nut and it appears to have come off up the top there. It's uh, actually down in here. It's what appears to hold the uh, screw points on the top for this battery cover. So let's put this uh, back in its case. Careful not to sort of damage anything while I do. Slide that in. There's a bit of springiness there, but I think that's the uh, battery connections pressing against um, the uh, bits that they press against. There's a bit of damage there, unfortunately. It's broken on that corner. That's a shame. Okay, let's get the screws back in. 
Right now, because there are no batteries in here, I'm not going to be able to uh, use the ohms uh, setting, but I should be able to just measure volts. So what I've done is I've just put this nine volt battery on here. Now we need the DC switch uh, or the DC setting on the AC switch. And on DC, I'm going to go for uh, 10 volts. Let's just make sure the needle moves. Yeah, so that moves. I'll now get in on that display and we'll see if we can get an accurate reading. So let's connect that up. And we've got uh, nine and a bit volts up there on the 90. Now, of course, you need to get the parallax of the needle right, which is what the mirror's for. So if I turn this, no, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to tip it. In fact, I think I'm going to have to get my camera out of its mount. So the way you do this is you move your eye. Uh, normally, I suppose you'd close one eye, but camera's only got one eye, of course, until those uh, the reflection of the needle and the needle itself are overlaid, and then you make your measurement, and it looks like it's exactly 9.1 volts. Uh, let's compare that with a DMM. Hmm, not bad. My DMM says uh, 9.09 volts. Pretty spot on. Oh, there we are. 9.1. Spot on. Now on this display, we've got ohms, volts, amps. There's also microfarads here. So it actually has a, a capacitance range. Interestingly, the full scale reading on microfarads is infinity. And I think you have to calibrate this, uh, I don't know, possibly with the probe shorted for infinity microfads, or actually it'd be more likely open circuit, wouldn't it? And then uh, it sort of reads backwards um, on that range. Now you've also got, uh, what's this, milliwatts and watts. Now you can measure watts apparently using these PF connectors here, and you need a special accessory in order to do that. And uh, here we've got power, which is watts, and decibels as well. Now in this user manual, which is uh, linked to from Wikipedia, we have some of the accessories here. There's a multiplier or multipliers, uh, extend the voltage range of the instrument. I'm not sure which way. Oh, okay, so they're uh, just resistor dividers, probably. You can go up to 4,000 volts. Uh, current shunt here and a transformer for doing uh, AC related stuff. I can't imagine exactly what. And uh, here's the Model 7 power factor and wattage unit, which uh, connects to these two upper connectors. And uh, there's some boxer tricks there and a gauge of some sort there. Again, no idea what this is and how it works. I probably should read this. There's a, a resistance range extension unit here, and then also leather carrying cases, neither of which look like the carrying case that I've got. So again, can't really date it from, uh, from this stuff. And uh, here on the very last page is a circuit diagram, and there's the nine volt battery, the uh, 1.5 volt battery, which is just in series with one of those uh, potentiometers, uh, the various resistors here for the different uh, DC settings. There's the big switch that rearranges everything for AC. That is uh, a bridge rectifier with those four diodes. And there's that transformer. Now, where's the moving core meter itself? Well, I suppose it's that, is it? I think it is. So uh, there it is. It's an AVO7 uh, digital. Uh, no, it's not digital, is it? It's not digital, it's an analog, analog multimeter. Now, call me a Philistine, but I don't really have much of a desire to own one of these, and particularly to use it. I just think that it's of its day, and these days it's a bit impractical, really. But uh, I'd probably be more interested in finding out how much it's worth and selling it rather than actually keeping it and using it. I'm just not a test equipment geek. Test equipment just doesn't really do it for me. So back it goes in its rather mouldy box. I mean, I like retro electronics, but for me, it's retro computers I'm interested in. I mean, there's no electronics in here, really. Uh, there's a few resistors and a couple of diodes, but uh, 
in terms of this is this is more electrical and actually a lot of it is mechanical really and uh, crop clips the probes are there and then go the quite substantial leads they're very mucky so it looks like this has been well used and let's close it up and that's the AVO 7 meter to be returned to its rightful owner. Cheerio.